Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson and it's been an interesting week on the reef. So I've been on vacation which has been really cool. I've had this vacation scheduled for six eight months now. It's been great. Unfortunately my wife's back has gone out. She has to have surgery so it hasn't been as much fun as it could be. So I'm set to go on vacation on Wednesday and we end up pushing that off till Thursday because of my wife's back but Wednesday afternoon rolls through and we get a nasty storm yeah nice big power spike screws up my LED lights so I'm gonna make a whole nother video in the future on how I'm working around it it won't be perfect but it's gonna be better than nothing so right before I'm going on vacation my lighting gets screwed up that sucks now I'm only gonna be gone for 36 hours at the most. So I top up the tanks, feed the fish before we leave, and we head off to Colorado Springs, Colorado. Now we go for 36 hours, so I'm not expecting much. I feed the fish. When I come home, everything's good. So now since my wife's back's been out, we haven't done a whole lot with her 24 gallon nano cube. But she finally felt good enough that she wanted to do some shopping. So we started at Alpine Koi and Reef in Fort Collins, Colorado, whose display tank has one of the prettiest flamingi tanks that I've seen locally. This fish is amazing. In fact, their whole tank looks fantastic. So we shopped their store. It's a really cool store, lots of cool fish, lots of cool coral, and a really nice pond set up in back where you can buy koi and everything you'd ever want for a pond. Someday, maybe I'll get one. But I figured I'd just go ahead and show the display tank because it's absolutely beautiful. Alpine Koi and Reef also had a beautiful, large show hole in Panther Grouper swimming around in an interesting sail tank. The thing is covered in Aptasia, but I guess in a fish only tank with big, aggressive fish, who cares if there's Aptasia all over the tank? And it does look kind of cool. From there, we went to the fish crew in Fort Collins, Colorado. Again, I'm just showing the display tank because it feels a little weird filming a bunch of people. But this is a 2200 gallon fish only system. It's got sharks and tons of really large predatory fish. It is a really cool tank and a really cool store. So I try to get there once every month or two and check it out. At the fish crew, my wife bought a yellow Watchman Gobi and another yellow clown goby. Maybe when I win Powerball, I'll get a tank this big. Mine'll be a reef, of course. So then we went home and acclimated everything. We also moved some coral from the five gallon tank to the 24 gallon. Of course it's not over. We bought a yellow Watchman goby, but we couldn't find a pistol shrimp. So the next day, we had to go to Animal Attractions in Greeley, Colorado and look for a pistol shrimp. And of course they had a great pistol shrimp but they also had a longhorn cowfish. Now, if you remember, I used to have a longhorn cowfish, but my wife has always wanted another one, and part of her 24-gallon tank build was always to buy a small one so she could put him in there and raise him up and eventually put him in the 210. So again, we came home, acclimated, and put everybody in the tank. So you'll notice we didn't quarantine the longhorn cowfish. And for a fish that is as difficult and delicate as a longhorn cowfish, this might have been a good idea, but there's always risk. If any of the fish end up showing signs of ick or marine velvet, we will pull them out and put them in the QT tank and treat them. So this already sounds like a pretty exciting few days on the reef, but it gets a little crazier. Because remember I told you about the rose bubble tip going around the rock on the last reef vlog? Well, this morning I looked at him and he split. Here's the rose bubble tip after the split. And you can see he's decided to kind of walk around. He's actually left the rock and gone onto the overflow. And his little clone is sitting up here under the Manipora. Now I tried to pull each one of these guys off of here and get one off, but they were just on too tight. I'd always said if one split, I was gonna go ahead and take one and put it in my frag tank 
downstairs. I went and did dishes, and this is the scene that greeted me when I got back. The little clone had tried to kill himself by getting himself sucked into the pump. I immediately shut the pump off, pulled the clone out, and went ahead and checked the larger anatomy. And it came right off, so I took him downstairs and put him in the anemone frag tank. The little clone actually looks like he's going to be okay, but with everything he's been through, only time will tell if he'll survive. The 24 gallon is really starting to come around. It does have some minor issues, the bird's nest is pretty bleached out, and the frog spawn doesn't really open up very much. Now these are both the bottom of the barrel corals from the going out of business sale. They were dirt cheap and they were a little iffy when we bought them. But hey, they still got a good chance at making it. And this cowfish is really cool. I'm excited to see how well he does in this 24 gallon tank. Now long term, this guy will have to go in my 210 because this can be a 20 inch fish someday. Also, I don't recommend these fish to anything but an advanced hobbyist, and even advanced hobbyists sometimes struggle to keep these fish. But if he does well, he will absolutely be the jewel of this tank and eventually the 210. And how's that 210 doing? Like always, fantastic. Thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.